On today's video, we're gonna complete this foundation waterproofing system with a killer French drain. All right, we're back with my builder friend, Brian Long. Brian's building this incredible house on this hill country site. Man, it's gorgeous over here, Brian. Thanks, buddy. Glad to have you out here. So uh, we're on a Jim LaRue designed house. We've got a full in-ground foundation that turns into a walkout with an incredible stream over here. And your crew did an amazing job on these waterproofing details that we talked about in the last video. Today, we're gonna talk about protection and drainage. But before we get into that, what's the first step now? We're gonna come back through and find any imperfections in this sheet good. We'll use the 2200 to fill any holes, pock marks, anything that didn't get a complete fill. Because it's really important that this becomes a uni unilateral sheet to make sure that no water has any chance to get in. Water is the world's greatest solvent, so you can be assured it's gonna find a way to get in if you don't fill it up. No doubt, Brian. And uh, you know, now that this is up too, it's interesting, in past years and job sites I've driven by, I've seen some builders go, all right, we're waterproof, time to backfill. What's the problem with that? Well, when you do that, you're going to put all the water directly in contact with the waterproofing membrane. And like I said, water is going to find a way to get in there if it doesn't have a way out. Mm -hmm. So the ideal way to do this is to put a drain board up against the product itself. It protects it from any rocks, anything falls back in of your road base, whatever you're using for your backfill. It keeps it safe and keeps that membrane protected. And uh, Polywall's got a pretty interesting system that I'd not seen before until they showed this to me recently. Yeah, this is their Arroyo drain system, and you can see it. It's got a lot of uh, dimples here, and then this filter fabric that's over it. This gives the water a way out. It keeps it from wanting to penetrate the wall to begin with. And then they have their uh, outlet system, which if you don't want to put in a traditional French drain system, this works as the French drain. You can tie in a solid pipe to this and get your water out directly from this product to here. Impressive, Brian. Um, so when this goes on, tell me the steps. Where, where do we start here? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to apply a spray adhesive to the backside and let it flash out, get all the solvents out of it, and we're going to apply it to the wall as well. After that, we'll come in, and it's just as simple as placing it up against the wall and pressing it in tight. In your corners, you'll score the product so that it, it releases, so you get a nice tight fit to the membrane. And when you get to your exterior corner, same thing. You score it again and break it around so that it gets a nice tight corner. You don't want to cut the filter fabric in any way or shape because that's where your sediment can get in. Yeah. And it's really important that we keep sediment out of this product because this is going to allow the water to get out. Also unique in their system, you've got a two foot bottom piece here and you've got some thicker dimples, maybe one inch at the bottom and then some thinner dimples, maybe half inch at the top. And I love how you're using the spray adhesive. You know, it's like a Formica countertop. You spray both sides, right. let it get tacky. And then once you press that up against there, it's gonna hold tight to that it's wall. On, it's on there for good. The other thing too is then after that, when we start coming in for our, our French drain system, cause we're gonna do a traditional French drain system here. And when we do that, then that gives us the ability to do this in lifts. We can get the French drains in, we can do just this first section, and then we can come back in and put the next sections in, which makes it easier on the laborers as well. As they're applying this, they don't have to try to reach up the entire wall. We can do it as we go, because this stuff all runs in a horizontal versus a vertical. I really like that, Brian. And so we've got a two-foot section. We can backfill in that two-foot section, and we're gonna, I'm gonna ask you about the French drain in a minute. But then we've got four-foot sections above that, and with that spray adhesive, I love that you're not working on a ram set or trying to figure out another way to fasten through that water barrier. Yeah, and damage the barrier itself. That's right. Now, Brian, walk me through your French drain system. You've got a couple details that I think are fantastic. So t step me through the process. Well, when you're doing your French drain system, a lot of these guys are using these what's called a sock on your French drain. Well, if you think about what you're doing, you're limiting the amount of filter fabric that that French drain actually has. Basically, the only thing it has is those two small holes. Mm -hmm. With what we do is we put the French drain in raw with no sock on it. And then we put our wash separate septic rock on top of that, and we create what's like called a burrito. Okay. We're going to use the filter fabric. It's going to come up and over the rock and then back down over the rock again. We'll use a little spray to keep the pieces of filter fabric together. After that, we'll come in with more septic rock on top of that and then another layer of filter fabric, guaranteeing that we don't have any sediment because this caliche out here in Texas is very, very fine. 
And it doesn't take a lot of that to get in there and clog your French drain system. Yeah. The other thing that we do, it's a little different than some people, is we do clean outs in ours. We'll take it all the way up to the grade. So if there ever is a problem with your French drain system, it's real easy to run a snake down through there, clean it out, and make sure that it's back to flow. Beautiful, Brian. What a great system. Now, uh, tell me about the pipe itself. Are you running one pipe, two pipes, and what's the type of pipe you're using for the French drain? We're using a Schedule 40. They do have the Schedule 20, but we found as we've come back at times, we've had to move things or a client changes their mind, we add on to a house. We found that the Schedule 20 actually can collapse. Uh, and if you're using that black dimpled pipe, you can forget about it. That stuff will just crush. I mean, it's, it's literally is worthless. So we're using a Schedule 40. It's pre-drilled, it's green, it's a really nice product. All regular Schedule 40 fittings work with it. So we can use our Schedule 40 clean outs and everything like you have in traditional plumbing. Now holes on that Schedule 40 drain pipe are only on one side. Do those go up or down, Brian? They always go down. And it's, you know, intuitively people think, oh, the holes should go up, but it's just the opposite. They're down at the bottom because all your groundwater is down there at the very bottom. That gives it a way to percolate in. There's a trough that runs between it that guarantees a nice waterway and takes it to daylight. Man, Brian, incredible system, beautiful details. You and your crew, you guys are top notch, man. If anyone's interested in uh, learning more about Brian, especially if you have uh, $5 million to build a Hill Country house, mm -hmm. Brian Long Custom Homes, Brian's an incredible builder, just does a great job on all these details. And remember guys, you got one shot to do your basement waterproofing right. Come back and do this later, it's gonna cost a lot of money and you're gonna have an unhappy client to begin with. Brian, I'm really impressed. Oh, thanks, Ben. I'm glad to have you out here. You, you impress me all the time. Your videos are wonderful, and uh, I'm glad to have you on my site. Brian, incredible job. You and your crew are so detailed. You've nailed the building science on this house. Very, very impressive. Thanks for joining us, guys. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next week on The Build Show.